Alright, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the Remote Closing Academy podcast, and in this one guys, my brain absolutely exploded, <laughs> and you'll you'll hear about halfway through the episode, I'm not going to spoil anything about it, but when I found out what I found out on this episode from this person that I was talking to, um, it, it was actually really funny, like you'll, you'll hear the real raw uh, kind of reaction to that, and for anyone that is even just remotely... Uh, pun intended, remotely interested in remote closing, uh, you're going to want to listen to this one because this person was able to, it's incredible to see where this person was and where they are now um, in in the amount of time that they were able to do that. So with all that being said, you're probably like, okay, Aaron, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. Go ahead and jump into this episode, sit back, relax, and enjoy. But before we jump too far, Kyle, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. I'm happy to be here. Excellent. So let's just kick it off, man. I think if you know anyone that's listened to the show before is they know that we like to rewind the clocks a little bit and figure out, you know, what was your experience and and kind of life before uh, remote sales, we'll say. So just, uh, you know, rewind the clocks a little bit for us and and just break down, you know, what were you doing before remote sales, remote closing, the remote world in general? And let's just let's dive into that a little bit. Yeah, I'll try and keep it kind of short. But um, um, I was in the Navy Reserves for 10 years. Um, I kind of went on deployments a lot. And so in between deployments, um, I was doing like security jobs mainly, some serving jobs. Um, And then obviously before that, I had a bunch of other jobs that I did, but I don't need to get into all that. Um, (laughs) And so I went out to uh, Guantanamo Bay for about nine months, South Korea for a year and a half. And I even contracted out in Afghanistan for six months. kind of and, been all over <laughs> yeah all over the place for sure um and so i did I did a bunch of that and then um yeah and then i during those times too like i would be able to save up a lot of money um and i would always invest that money and um usually some kind of biz op where i try and because i was very i really wanted to own a, a business work for myself um and so i tried like amazon fba i tried making shirts um designs on amazon i've tried um making beef jerky in south korea i've tried a, a clothing brand that's a new one i've never heard the beef jerky one i've heard amazon fba and and drop shipping and all that stuff that's that's interesting i went out the box outside the box i've tried like drop shipping i've tried i've tried so many things i even, I even forget some people remind me i'm like oh yeah i did try that huh i was in like a, a multi-level marketing thing um i think that's that's a prerequisite it's like you you have to do at least one mlm before <laughs> before you figure out it's not the it's not the way <laughs> exactly and so yeah i did i did that and it was just it was just all like i found out that it was hard for me to sell my own things for some reason Like I had experience selling other stuff, like um, when I was a server kind of, and when I was doing sales at Sears before even all that. Um, And I was always really good at sales. I couldn't sell my own thing. So I was like confused about it. And so finally I decided, you know, after Afghanistan, I did six months there. I had like a three year hiatus where I just like didn't work because I had a bunch of money saved up and I was just chilling. And I was like, looking back, I was like, what a stupid idea. (laughs) Why did I do that? (laughs) I shouldn't have. Um, But I did that. And then so... um, as I was like getting serious with my now wife um, and I was like, man, like we're starting the fiance visa. She's going to be out here. I can't just be like willy nilly. I need to kind of buckle down. Mm-hmm. Um, so I uh, started looking to what I should do for a career. And I was like, okay, let's get serious about my, my job path. And I was like, I really want to hone in on my sales skills. Cause I feel like I'm naturally good. Um, I wonder what it would be if I can actually practice it and get better at it. Um, and then also, potentially someday if I start trying to sell for myself, maybe learning more about sales would help me with that. Um, mm-hmm. Because I can sell other people's stuff easily for some reason. And so, um, yeah, so I, I started looking for sales jobs. I got one. Um, and then the sales job ended up actually kind of having like a multi-level marketing structure. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't a multi-level marketing thing. Uh-huh. Um, and so like the, the lowest rung of people make very little money. Um, with promises that when you level up, you'll make a lot more. Um, and so I'm very grateful for that opportunity. I worked there for about six months. I was doing road shows inside Costco. Um, and it taught me a lot. Like it taught me really good about handling rejection, regaining your energy, knowing like why you're in this position where you want to go, like goal setting, um, taught me, um, it's just a, it's like a bunch of things and they like really hammer it into you. Um, like it's like one of the things you like memorize like these eight steps and I've already forgot most of them, but, <laughs> uh, but the important ones stuck with me. Um, and 
So I was grateful for that. But honestly, it was like I told him I needed to level up in six months and then six months was coming and that what then it seemed like I was getting close to leveling up. And so I was like, I, I gotta go. Like I was I was the best in the US and Canada consistently. Um and I was only making like eighteen hundred dollars a month. I was like, how is this possible? Oh, how can, how can I be the best in like the country? Uh, in the, all of North America even yeah, and what? then be making so little money. Like I had people calling me for advice and and how, so I can coach them and guide them on what I was doing right. And um, yeah, so I was like, this was is crazy. That, was that like a full-time thing? Yeah, it was like a, it was oh, like a full-time man. thing. Well, they said it was like part-time, but it felt full-time. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Um, so then I left that. And um, while I was like t- on the tail end of that, kind of thinking about leaving, um, I was, I saw an ad for RCA. And so I hopped in um, and yeah. And so that's like basically my journey until RCA, if you want me to stop there. It's interesting because I think out of the the episodes that we've done up to this point, I think there's really only been two, one or two people that has have already been like, I guess, in sales. Well, in sales in like that type of capacity, right? Like a lot of people will like work retail or whatever. I guess you can technically say that sales, but like you're getting that you're not usually not getting paid a commission, you know, depending on like the, the job that it is. Um, OK, that's that's there was one thing that you said. Um, so when, I mean, you know, coming from the military and stuff, like, have you found that like the work ethic that you had to kind of like the standards that they held there, like has, has translated into, into what you're doing now? Honestly, um, the work ethic for the people in the military is all over the place. I think there's a, there's this misconception, um, of most of the people, I mean, a lot of people in the military are, you know, have a structure and understand discipline. Um, but a lot of people don't also, <laughs> um, especially when you're in the reserves, I think. Um, mm-hmm. and so I wouldn't say that necessarily. I mean, I think it helps, right. It helps you with understanding discipline and helps you with, um, with structure, but ultimately it's just my, I think it was just my drive to wanting to learn sales for myself and um the goals of hopefully i can start my own business and because you are attending nine right you technically can have an llc and start your own business and and so it's, it's gonna i believe it, i'm starting to look into the um accountants and stuff um and i think it's gonna scratch my itch of being able to say hey i have a business i do the taxes for a business and um so it's gonna fill that fill that gap of like what i really want so I think it's going to be really cool. So you make the transition, you know, you're, you're, you see the ad from RCA and it's probably, you know, Cole talking about something about how you shouldn't do Amazon FBA or drop shipping or any of that stuff and just start being a, a remote closer. Um, I guess what did, how was that conversation coming in? Like, you know, when you talk to, you know, our team and, you know, they told you about it, like, was it, you know, I feel like a lot of people that have already like invested in like biz op stuff. They, they aren't like they're a, a lot more like apt to be like, oh, yeah, like, let's try this. But was there ever like any skepticism or anything like that when you were having those conversations? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a serial um, course buyer or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, <Same. laughs> I was just I just wanted to I just really was hoping to get that business started and and shiny object syndrome sucks. And um and I just had money because I was always, I was really big into saving. I'm a pretty frugal person, so I always had money. And my idea was like I always invest it in myself and learn some new skill sets with that money. And that's what I was doing. And um, yeah. So when I when I actually when I talked to um, RC, they are like the, went through the the whole sales process for RCA. Um, I wasn't in a good financial position. Literally, I was losing money every month. Um, I was just still living off my savings. Um, and so it was hard for me. And then my, and like right when I was starting to get into it, my wife was here. Um, and so I had to talk to her about it. Um, I was like, man, like, I think I can do this. It's a kind of expensive when I'm not making money. <laughs> and so I'm going to have to really hammer down on this. Is it okay? Cause like I'll basically be going to work, coming home, doing mock call stuff, like working on this stuff. And then I, I was like, I just don't want you to feel neglected. You know, I had that talk with her and she was like, I believe in you. If you think you can do this, you can do this. And I was like, okay. Um, and so I eventually just bought in and started trying to figure out what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. Cause I, it was seeing her some at that time. Yeah. I think that's extremely important. Like having, having those conversations. Cause it's, it's the difference between like doing it and then like, you know, not having that open communication of like, okay, I'm going to spend 
a lot of time on on this thing to to make it work. So how I guess how did you balance that? You know, having and I know a lot of people that are I mean that jump into RCA are doing it because they want to. You know, eighty percent, ninety percent of people they want to better their situation. So what was like that structure for you that that made you? I'm sure it was a grind, right? A lot of you know consistent working and probably very little sleep. But how how did you manage that? Yeah, my goal is to book at least one mock call a day. Um, sometimes I did more. And then once I actually quit my job and I didn't have a gig yet, I just quit my job because I was tired of it. And I was like, I just want to focus more on RCA. Um, then I was doing like three, four mock calls a day. Um, and so I quickly moved into um, getting into that those 15 mock calls. And they were like requesting 30, right? I think you guys still do request 30. Um, but it was like, yeah, we want you to do 30 mock calls. But then I did 15 and I was the, the whole, like all 15 and I never got any feedback. So I was like, mm-hmm. and if they were giving me feedback, it was very nitpicky, right? It was like things that aren't really deal breakers, but like could potentially be improved. Um, and so, yeah, I just hit it and found a, I found a cool group of like five, six people, um, that kind of rotated through that were reliable. And I heard that there's some issues with like people no showing and stuff. And, um, and I got lucky and I didn't get any of those. Like I just got good people talking to me and, um, we kind of rotated and, and just practiced our scripts and, um, and got it in. And then I eventually I was just like, all right, man, let's get into the pipeline. And so like did the application and then rest is history, man. You know, with that transition, so you jump into RCA, you start doing the training, you do a bunch of mocks, and then now it's it's time to get in the pipeline. So I just want to sidebar really quickly with the people that are listening. Um, you know, for, for those of you that might have not heard other episodes, we've talked about this before, but the pipeline essentially is when you come into RCA, um, a part of what makes the program, uh, I'd say more valuable, right, quote unquote, is the fact that the other side of our business, right? We have RCA, which is Remote Closing Academy. We have STA, which is Sales Team Accelerator. And what we do is we help uh, coach basically other businesses on how to build a sales team. And a part of that is we place them with appointment setters and closers, right? So it's this really synergistic kind of like, okay, we train salespeople, we place them into the other offer, and it's like this this transfer of, of people, essentially. So uh, with the pipeline is, you know, if you do what what Kyle here did and like really grind it out, you know, really build up his skills, you have the opportunity to then get placed into a proven offer, which allows you to have, you know, ba- basically make it a lot easier on yourself. Um, but of course, that does come with the work and making sure that you are, you know, seeing the success there. So let, let's talk about that. What was your experience with the pipeline? You know, talking to some because we were talking a little bit before um, and I think, you, you know, went through a couple different offers. But let's just let's break down that that process. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I got into the pipeline um, and it was like filled out this big, long document they had to fill out before you do the pipeline. Um, did the interview and then I was in the pipeline. <laughs> and I was like, cool, I guess I just wait. And then um, um, while I was waiting, I actually self tried to self-source. I, just, like, I reached out to like one gig um, and it was because a friend was recommending it. And so I was like, all right. So I did like a, that the whole thing that's coached with making a video and being like, hey, owner or hey, whatever, this is me. I'm a sales guy. Hire me. Um, and so I sent that off and never heard back from that. So I was like, okay, cool. And then um, an offer came through the pipeline. So one of the um, guys in the RCA team just reached out to me and said, hey, we found a gig that we think you're good for. Um, and something that's important to note in the pipeline is they ask you for like your top three kind of industries or whatever you want to work mm-hmm. in. And so I was like, I want biz op, I want um, personal development, and I want... Um, real estate or my, my top three. And so they put me with a personal development kind of gig. Um, and the owner liked me when I interviewed with him. Um, he got me in. Um, and then, yeah, I started working there and, um, I, my, my idea was, you know, no matter what the gig is, I'm just going to accept the first one that accepts me and get some experience, hands-on experience with it. Um, cause I just really wanted to get that hands-on experience to see what it was really like on the other side. Um, and so I got, familiar with the software they were using. I started doing all the dials and, um, but what ended up happening with that gig is I ended up leaving that gig, um, after like two to three months. Um, so they, they, they kept me for like the guarantee period or whatever. Um, and then, uh, ended up basically, it just didn't work out. Um, it was like a newer team. I think, in my opinion, I think he was trying to have too big of a sales team for what he had going on. Um, and then it just kind of made everybody not really make the money that they should be making. Um, and so I decided 
that this probably wasn't the best for me. Um, I was making better better money than my sales job before I joined RCA, um, but still wasn't at the point to where I needed where I needed it to be. Mm -hmm. um, I was still technically losing money every month. So I was like, okay, well, this isn't it. So I hopped off. I had a little pity party for about a, a month, um, you know, been beating myself up. And then I decided to snap out of that and say, okay, well, I mean, I've, I see other people winning at this and I'm going to win. And so I got back into the, I reached back out and said, hey, put me back in the pipeline. Um, I'm ready to go again. <laughs> um, and so at this time, my coach was Chris um, Atke. And so he put me back in the pipeline. I quickly got reached out to again. Um, and then that, and then I got that gig. Um, and that gig has been incredible so far. It's like, exceeded my expectations. And um, the team is super small. It's me, a closer, and then the sales manager. Um, and I'm just super happy and grateful for where I am. And um, I'm proud of myself for the work I put in. And I'm grateful for the RCA community. I'm actually in the school program right now. I think I'm number one on the leaderboards. Not to brag. Boom. <laughs> Humble brag. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to give back to the community, you know, and because I'm just super grateful for everything that's happening. And um, I'm in a position where, you know, I feel, I don't know, I feel welcomed. I love the team. I love everything about what we're doing. I'm talking to great people. Um, and it, it's all just making a very amazing kind of, um, environment and, and I'm making good money. <laughs> awesome, dude. So I, I did want to take one, one really quick step back to, you know, the, the pity party, right? That, that position, you know, you, you coming off that one offer and it's like the world's falling apart and that kind of stuff. What, uh, was there any types of like motivation or like things that you, you did to get out of that point? Cause I think that, I mean, it, it's part of the game, right? It's like, you, you don't like, even, even with me, like I, you know, I work directly with Cole and even there's some days where I'm just like, oh my gosh, like there's so much stuff to do. Like, you know, what was me? So like, was there, was there anything that, you know, that, that you did specifically that, that helped you out of that? Yeah. You know, I don't know what I did specifically, but I just thought about all these other things that I've tried to do with businesses and, and this one just made the most sense because I know with a business, you have to wear so many freaking hats. And I know this is part of the spiel too, right? For why you should go in RCA and it's, it is amazing. Um, it's like, I had to do marketing. I had to do the sales. I had to do the, 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 the um, delivery. I had to do all these different things. And so um, I was like, man, I, if I'm going to make something work, it has to be this. Like I can't just, keep failing like i'm not someone that usually like, likes to fail i'm usually very competitive and like to be the best <laughs> so um i just kind of kicked myself around and was like looking at like man should i just and i started applying for other jobs too i was like man maybe i should just go get a corporate job you know and so i started applying for other stuff and um and then i was like man i really need to make this sales thing work like i invested in it i invested in myself i need to I mean, at least get back into the pipeline. So it is another avenue of a possible job um, because I was still needing a job. I was still, I was like on my last like month of expenses by the time I actually got this gig in um, RCA. Um, and, I, and I actually turned down a job for Microsoft to get it. So I was like, yeah, I'm good. Microsoft, I'm going to go do the sales thing. And yeah. then <laughs> it's turned out to be a very, you know, a very good choice um, this time. So, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, I just started looking for jobs again. And then I was like, why not apply in the pipeline? So that's kind of and what got all, me into it. It all works out at the, in the end, man. Like, you know, what, whatever, whether you join an offer and you know, it's not the right fit and you leave and you know, you do all these things in between, but you know, it's all, all it matters is you, you get there towards the end and, and you're, you know, it looks like you're, you're doing pretty well. So, um, on that same note, you know, what are some of the, you know, we always talk about like when people listen to these episodes they are like, all right, cool. Like all that stuff's great. But like, how much money do you make? <laughs> so like, I'm not saying, you know, directly you have to talk about like, specific numbers, but, um, you know, I guess just some wins of, of what you've seen with that, that current program. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not scared to share my numbers. Um, and I think I've, I've already short shared them in the school pl uh, platform. And so, um, yeah, so I'll actually start off with the, the first gig I got. Um, I ended up making twenty six hundred dollars a month. They kind of promised me four thousand, um, but I was talking to other setters and no one was had to even made three thousand. And so I was like, oh, so like their KPI is a little higher than what they've ever done before. So they wanted me to kind of come in and be the um, the front 
the charger front charger and so i was like man this isn't it <laughs> and so i got into this new gig and my first month ended up being about 3.3 3, thousand um so my first month of all training and all that was already better than my last gig so that made me feel really good um the next month i was expecting i was like oh, i probably, probably hit like five thousand dollars a month because i had some res- what i call residuals right the payment plans that are going through that come through the next month um and so I was like, maybe like I'll hit five. That'd be cool if I hit six. Um, we ended up hitting a record month. Um, and this is just it. This is in August um, 2022 for anybody listening. <laughs> um, and so um, that ended up being a, a 9.5K month. So $9,500. Nice. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And I really thought I hit 10,000, but ended up being the last guy that was sold um, who was a PIF. The, who, which is exactly what we needed to get to that ten thousand dollar mark for myself, ended up not being a guy that I talked to. And I was like, dang. It. Oh man. <laughs> it was like someone that who came in before I even joined the company, and I didn't get my hands on him. And I was like, son of a gun. So I was a little upset about that, but obviously I was super excited. I got nine point five, um, and so that was cool. And then this month, um, the month's not over yet, but we're at about eight thousand dollars in commission for the month, um the august month we had so many piffs it was crazy um that's why it kind of jumped up so fast but we're at about the same amount of closes um this month and we're shooting for seven more before the end of the week um and which would put us at 30 closes for the for the uh, month and it would be another record month um so yeah i'm excited but yeah i'm at about eight thousand dollars right now for the commissions for this month Dude, that's that's so awesome to hear because you know even when we're talking at the beginning, it's like you're busting your ass for eighteen hundred bucks, you know, eighteen hundred bucks a month. And I'm sure, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's about the same work, but I feel like, I mean, you can. Oh, so you're working harder there? Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> I would, I would, be, I'd be going in the Costco in the morning, setting up the thing, um, and then once it's set up, I'd be running the whole the show, the road show, um, and like you're just, it's just like it was so much more work. It's just crazy. Like honestly, right now with the gig I'm at. I actually, I don't, mind. I don't know. I'm not going to divulge that, but it's a lot. It was a lot more work doing, make, trying to make that eighteen hundred dollars a month yeah. than it is now. Yeah, and I think that's like it's it's usually hit or miss. Like even with uh, you know a lot of stuff that I was doing, like I, I used to work with uh, uh, this real estate company and helping them with videos and stuff. And you know, I was like probably working sixty hours a week to make like two thousand dollars a month. Like <laughs> it was just a, a struggle. So it's it's just really cool to see um, you know you and and anyone that that stays the the course with this stuff it's like you can like the sky is literally the limit and the other cool part too is you know from what it sounds like i mean 30 30 closes a month is is good for any company but i think like you're you're partnering with them in like the infancy infancy stages of business so when it gets to a point where like they're doing 50 sales a month 75 100 sales a month it gives you a ton of opportunity to ascend into you know we talk about like the the sales integrator position and and being you know to a point where you can take even less calls and make you know two to three times what you're you're currently making. So I think it's um it's super exciting to to be in kind of that that ground level, you know. Absolutely, and I'm actually working on building up my closer skill set now, so that when we do expand, I can hop into that position, um, and uh, hopefully crush it and basically essentially double double my revenue. So <laughs> wait, hold on. So this you're, are you a setter for them? Surprise, I'm a setter. Oh, sh- <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I guess I should have um, I should have clarified that then. So that, like, I mean, that's, for people that are listening, like, 10 grand a month is, I mean, about average, I'd say, for a closer, you know? What's the what's the offer price point? Um, The offer is 7,500 to 16,000. Okay. Dude, that's amazing. I mean, I, I don't know why I didn't catch on to that. Um, Okay, so, like, that's just a kind of, brain exploding moment for me which i mean and and i and yeah well and that's the thing like it's it's crazy um for everyone's listening like i'm again i'm just having kind of this epiphany i'm um, here on this call with kyle but it's like keep in mind when did you start the offer i started in july 5th. july July, August, September. So about four ish months. Well, we'll say three and a half months, right? Since we, um, you know, at the time we're recording, this is October or almost October, September 28th. Um, and you started RCA in December. So coming up on like what? That's 10 months. It's 10 months of, of work to literally have an, like an entry level position to make basically $10,000 a month. Like to show me any, 
other job occupation where you get an entry level position where you're making ten thousand dollars a month. Like you can't. It's it's basically impossible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if that right, if you're if you come in as a brand new lawyer, who's gonna trust you with cases? No one, right? You're you're grinding out for years to build up the credibility to get that point, and it, yeah, exactly. And then you're you're in less than ten. Dude, that's that's amazing. I'm super proud of you, man. I mean, we just like kind of met on this uh, this call, but I am. I think it's that's awesome, man. Yeah, and I and I, you know, I just keep thinking, oh man, the grass is so green on the closer side now. Like, but like he's the closer I'm with is like he's a killer. So, um, yeah, I've I've even been tracking my numbers. So, um, this month, about f- a little less than fifty percent of the people I've set on this calendar is closed, which means I feel like I'm doing really good at my job as setting. Hmm. Yeah, I think it takes such a good like I'm I'm really I think it's really cool like to come in as an entry level and like really learn setting because if you don't learn setting first it's going to be so much more difficult to learn closing you know or, or to be a good closer and then and that's when actually why I started as a setter um it was because I wanted to get that skill set and then move into the closer position and just feel like I was all encompassing um and so I'm basically been following that um, and now I just need to build my skill set for closing because it's a bit more chunking down and it's a little bit harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a completely different game. But I, I think like, you know, doing doing the setting and doing that here for, you know, however long with time, next couple months, um, whatever the time frame is, um, what it will allow you to do is because you get so good at setting is you when you ascend into that closer role and they bring on another setter, you can literally turn that setter into you like that fast you know and then it just like the sets become better your closing ratio is better because of it show rates higher like there's so many benefits to starting out and it puts you in a really good light with the owner of the company because it's like okay kyle stuck with me for x amount of time it's just a natural progression into into that closer role so dude i'm pumped for you that's why i love having these these conversations just to you know to learn more about about what you got going on and um that's awesome man um so I know you uh, you have a call coming up here uh, in a second, so I don't want to keep you for too much longer. I guess um, any anything that you would say to someone that because I mean you you've been in the situation um, like pretty much anyone that's that's in the online space of trying a ton of different things of you know Amazon FBA drop shipping whatever. Um, what would you say to someone that is trying to do that and maybe like your kind of mentality of like okay, I I, I want to start my own thing but this RCA thing looks interesting. Like what was kind of that thought process of like, okay, maybe I'm not going to own my own thing, but I'm going to jump in here. Like what, what was going through your head there? Yeah. Um, you know, I honestly, it was just my own, me wanting to just learn sales. So that was what really drove me into it. But, um, and it was because in all my businesses that I was doing, I found that my sales was lacking. Like I, first it was marketing. So I would learn marketing. I even had a, a social media marketing business for a second, but then COVID messed that up because of my, my positioning on it. I was like, what niche were you in? Um, so I was actually specifically, I was trying to help in person kind of businesses help their show rates. Um, and so COVID messed that up because those in-person places can't have in-person show rates. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I was like, Oh, dang. So I, I finally got like two clients and then, I had to like give them up because COVID and I was like, that's stupid. And so then that was like during my three-year hiatus that I like one of the things I try to do. So I just practiced marketing a lot because I couldn't sell these for, so I, I bought like 400 pairs of shoes, 500 pairs of shoes. Um, I actually had them, des- I designed them and I had them manufactured and that was like one of my things and I couldn't, I can't sell, I still can't sell them <laughs> sitting in the garage. So you just have 500 <laughs> pairs of shoes just chilling? It's probably more like 420, 420 to 430 now, but yeah. Um, I've sold a shoes? few of them. They're blue suede, like Oxford's, like kind of, oh, okay. I call them smart casual um, nice. dress wear. I wouldn't wear them as like a, like a, with your suit or anything, but like you can go out in Seattle and look good in them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so <laughs> um, I just really wanted to get into sales and hone that skill because I was just a natural at it. And so it just felt, felt like I, I felt confidence in that I can do it. Um, and I like the fact that. Cause I've been trying to do the entrepreneur thing for so long that I was like getting just burnt out, just even just trying to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> I was like, there's just too many hats. And I like the fact that this was like, you learn one skill set, you hone in on that skill set and you just, you get, become a master at it and you become, get a career out of it. And I was like, yeah, this would be a nice break. <laughs> and so that was kind of like the, the mindset I think it was like, I just want to hone this one skill and 
also I have some successful people around me that have been in sales. Um, some of the more successful people. Um, my one of my best friends' bro- uh, father-in-law is in sales and supports like his whole family. Um, and I think it's crazy because he has a huge family and a big house, and um, it's, he's the only one that supports him. And I was like, "What?" And you're in sales, okay? And then my uncle on my dad's side um, is really successful. He's in sales and he doesn't have a big family or anything, but he like just redid his yard for $75,000. He like, is this craziness to me? And I'm like, man, so sales is like, definitely is a good path to go if you're going to go somewhere. Um, and those are the kind of things that influenced me and just decided, told me, told me to pull the trigger on it and get into it. I think there's, there's a lot of overlap that I've heard with like other people too. It's like when they, when they first hear about RCA and then it's just like this sales thing that's kind of like thrown out there a lot. It, it either have one, you have one of two like ways of thinking about it. It's like, ew, sales or like, okay, this is kind of interesting. Let me like maybe learn about it a little bit more. You know, it's, um, I'm trying to think who's the last person. Um, I can't think of it at the top of my head, but it's like when you, when you jump into, to the industry, that's so such like, it's just taboo, right? Sales is like, ugh, like sales, you know, use car salesman. And when you get really good at it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't put that on me. Don't put that on me. That's funny. But like that, and you know, just to add one more little thing to that too, is you know, I think a lot of people. For me, when I first jumped into, because I had an agency too, and you know, did that whole thing. And when I first like jumped jump ship into like more remote sales, is it was almost like an ego thing for me of like I want to be a business owner and I want to like blah blah blah. It's just like a lot of people are sold like you need to build your own business to make money which is like not the case at all, right? You just take, you know, a lion's share of, of some of the profits from some of these businesses you partner up with and you don't have to wear all the hats, you know? And the byproduct that that too is, you know, when you're first starting and you're like, okay, if you're bootstrapping and want to start a business, a lot of people don't have the money to, to invest into advertising and team and biz dev and all the things that you need to like scale really quickly. So and that's why I always tell people like remote sales is the way to go because two things happen, number one, or a lot of things happen, but more importantly, number one is you're joining an organization that already is a well-oiled machine. So what you get to do is you learn the internals of how all that's working. You know, you're you're basically getting paid to learn. You know, these these skills, and you just make more money for doing the one thing and not you know. So down the road, if you're just like, okay, let's say you do remote sales for a year or two years, you build up you know a war chest of you know a couple hundred k, and then you're like, hey, now I can start a business. I know how a good business is run, and you also have one of the most important skills that you need to run the business. You know, so it's like, I don't know why people put down, you know, working for other people when you can make this type of money. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Um, so cool, man. Any, I guess, parting words, like any, anything you would say to someone that is maybe, maybe in the fence of, you know, just remote sales in general, maybe not necessarily RCA, but, um, you know, just, yeah. What would you say to someone that's, that's looking to get into an industry like this? Yeah. Um, I would just say. Um, I, I was lucky enough to have RCA, right. And have that community and be able to do a lot of the practice, which is like the bread and butter, um, getting that repetition in. Um, um, but I would just say, you know, if you're looking to get into sales, like just do it, (laughs) start like, I would say, respond to people's ads that you see and be like, Hey, I want to do sales for you and see where that takes you. Um, Mm. and just and just get after it and just go because um sales is like i think grant cardone is also someone that says something right he's like sales is like one of the, like the number one skills that you can learn to make really good money without a college degree kind of thing um and i believe it um i have i have examples around me that show me that it's possible um and so i also want to just follow the footsteps and become good and working from home is awesome saving money on gas and Exactly. There you go. Okay. So I know I just asked you, uh, you know, agnostic of RCA, uh, you know, what would you say? But someone now you're talking to someone that is like, they've saw Cole's face, you know, his beard and all, and he's talking about this RCA thing. And they're like, well, you know, they're thinking, you know, I've, I've tried courses before and, you know, I don't know if I should like trust this program. What would you just say to someone that, that is on the fence of jumping in with us? Um, honestly, digging deep and, and, Try to decide for yourself if you're a, if you're a quitter because if you're a quitter, don't don't join RCA. <laughs> you need to be a go getter. You need to kind of take charge of your life and and get at it. And man, if and if yeah, it's just the community is amazing. 
you meet some cool people. I still talk to people that I went through RSA with and check in on them, see how they're doing. Um, and it's cool just to have that kind of almost brotherhood, right? It's almost like when I was in the Navy, like all the people in the military, I'm like, oh, you're in the military, cool. Um, we have that brotherhood. And now it's like everybody that's gone through RCA, we have like this brotherhood and sisterhood, right? And so um, I, I just really like the community. I like um, everything about RCA. It's just a the trainings are, are amazing and just like getting again that, that repetition practice and everybody kind of going after it um so not only are you saying it, but you're also hearing it back um and it's just invaluable man it's amazing it's i would say get in it if you're a hard charger and you, and you can rely on yourself to not give up um because there's like anything there's going to be a, a little bit of struggle here and there um but nothing you can't overcome and um yeah, that's all. That's all I would say to them. I think that's probably one of the the main things that we hear is just like the community aspect. And I think you know it, it's one thing because everyone says like the community and the groups, like stuff like that. You know, like in other programs, but it's like you feel it when you're within the program, right? It's it's you know there's however many people are within school now. It, it's just really uh, like sometimes I'll just like have 10, 15 minutes and I'll just scroll through the group and just like read posts and see you know what people are up to and. And, you know, the successes because it's it's really cool, right? Especially on, you know, in my position, just being on the marketing side, um, you know, sometimes I don't really see a, a lot of like the, you know, the, the the actual results that people are able to get and like the lives that are being changed. So um, that's also why I started this this show in general, just to be able to kind of dive into those. So, uh, dude, I appreciate you jumping on uh, and spending your time with us uh, for anyone that is listening. That's, you know, thinking about and has heard Kyle's story and, and so many others that we've, you know, on this podcast, um, what I, what we put together is a video. Uh, it's about, uh, actually, we just, we re- just recorded a new one at the time of recording this. So whatever long, however long it is, you know, if it's an hour, if it's 45 minutes, um, it'll be down in the description if you're watching on YouTube and in the show notes on the podcast app. And basically what it is, is Cole, the, uh, the founder of RCA, you know, was able to go from literally like three years ago from making 1500 bucks a month, right. As a bartender and, and, you know, founding this whole remote sales thing and, and, you know, able to, to make literally more than a new neurosurgeon, a brain surgeon in, you know, in about a year's time. Um, He put together a video that basically goes over what remote closing is, um, you know, how to get into it. And uh, yeah, just kind of just a value video uh, that goes more in deep in depth and detail about the whole thing. So uh, again, down in the description in the show notes, you can check that out. Um, But once again, Kyle, thanks so much for jumping on and uh, we will see everybody on the next episode. Aaron here from the Remote Closing Academy podcast, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Talk soon. Peace.